17th place. An absolute bloodbath going on in the loser side of this bracket right now. We have some absolute heavy hitters, and as you mentioned there before, Andres FN Lancelot going to be playing for again nothing short of 17th place, and that can show only you know make you imagine that this is just really stacked as a bracket. But let's get straight into game number one of Siski versus Mokro on small battlefield. Let's do it. Yeah, he is opting for regular Samus. I'd like to know the the logic behind that on the Bowser matchup in particular. I know characters like Steve are ones where Siski elects to use the regular Samus. He prefers to be Dark Samus whenever he can, but Samus does have some very, very minor quirks, like the different role. Oh, Ooh. he's going to just practically SD, really delays his way back. I'm not sure if there was a missed tether grab or something, but Mukuro got to be happy with that because Siski doesn't give those away for free. No, absolutely not. And it didn't look like Siski was intentionally giving it away for free either as well. There, Siski gonna have to try and find his bearings very soon in this game if he wants to try and make it back as soon as possible because Mirko can just get in and make you explode if you're not in the right state of mind there. Mirko looking for something here. Siski able to just get out of his situation. Just still standing on top of the Bowser player. You can get hit from up tilt, but the nail will do it for the smash. Huge! And this is what I was talking about earlier as well. Bowser having such big moves. Even if you're a heavy character like Samus, it doesn't matter. You're going to find yourself in a very, very difficult position if you leave yourself exposed. But Siski with a down air, the reversal, beautiful stuff off stage, is going to go ahead and take that stock off of Makaro there, leaving him with two stocks. And now Siski is going to try to hopefully take another early stock, pushing Bowser in the corner, looking for this grab. But now they're going to try and head, you know, going to try and reset it back to neutral here, both players. Looking and swinging for something big. Mokuro realizes the situation. You're going to have to end this as soon as possible here. Maybe opting to potentially bait for a forward smash here. Gets the forward tilt. No one was home. Once again, back throw coming up from Siski. Going to throw it there again. Beautiful up tilt. Mm -hmm. And now Siski bringing it down to one stock apiece here, Tail. Yeah, it's one of the absolute secret strongest moves in the business. We've just had another forward smash attempt from Mokuro. I mean, the first one worked. The second one just might have using the kind of invulnerability of Bowser's feet to try and sneak ahead of Samus's high range, perhaps. But Siski has brought this all the way back, is now in the lead. Mukuro had such a healthy lead, but now getting F smash, Ooh. just breaking through Samus's forward air. Can you read the ledge? Get up. No, oh. it's not smash you out. Siski is going to take game one after all. What a hard fought comeback. Wow. Yeah, incredible stuff there from Siski, who had a really, really shaky start. And we can see now that Bomb going to go ahead and just... Give him a little bit of space. Beautiful parry. Going to go ahead and space it out with the forward tilt. Forward air gets countered by Uppy there. As you can see, Mokuro looking to potentially find the up smash. But Siski, ever so fast, ever so quickly realizing the situation, getting a forward smash. Incredible punish from the Samus player. And gonna, yeah, he's actually just going to go ahead and take that very first game. Yep, so the stages will be locked in. I think Mukuro probably a little bit unfazed by the actual stage choices. That was more just a case of... I had the opportunity and I let it slip because I'm fighting a true top player right now and they will never uh, just throw away all the stocks. They're in it until they're out for good. So getting in there with an early up throw to forward air combo, put Mukro back in the lead, but jumps into the screw attack accidentally there. Siski's going to convert off of that and just trap Mukuro at Siski's favorite part of the stage, the <laughs> ledge. The ledge, absolutely, where Samus loves to shine a lot of the time. But speaking of being at the ledge right now, it seems like Mukuro is the one that's keeping Siski at bay. But to get out of the side, be beautiful stuff of using the downbeat, able to get himself out of there, up tilt into up air. Nice little combo there from Siski. Gonna build up a little bit more damage, gets the back air, looking for that, charging up Bola ever so nicely, trying to look to find the mark, lock in and load, and then take the shot. Mokuro able to make it back, but Siski was ready for the situation, throwing out the neutral B. Incredible, incredible stuff from Siski. Yep, but rolls straight into Bowser's own neutral B, very respectable in its own right, I'm sure. Almost all of the characters in the game would love to have Samus' charge shot if given the option, but Siski will be one of the best in the world at using it. Mukuro goes for the back air in the end, but the follow-up flying slam is still helpful. Not going to get any kills when it was center stage, not on any platforms, but the F-Tilt will certainly take it away. 
Absolutely. Big F tilt there coming out from Merkur. I'm going to go ahead and take that stock. And once again, you can see Siski trying to keep him away as far as possible. Doesn't want to let the beast in. I mean, who does anyway? Down B comes out once more. Going to try and jail Merkur here at the ledge. Going to keep it going and look for a potential option here. Gets the there. Beautiful Opto. And again, gatekeeping Merkur from making it back to stage here, Tail. Incredible stuff coming out from Siski. Yeah, Mukuro has been using a lot of the lower recoveries from Whirling Fortress. You have a lot of decision on how high you recover with the move, but Mukuro has just been trying to go fast and furious straight back to the ledge without ever getting into charge shots range. But sometimes that is just an impossible ask. Mukuro going with the running forward tilt and doesn't find its mark. But again, he always has a backup plan for those F tilts and has got Siski in a devilish position. Down air is actually going to get the true set well not true but a certainly hefty setup into an up air kill mukuro staying alive yeah want to make the most of that situation there at any given point they're using that up air to just really get leverage there but mukuro sitting at 151 percent so all of it was at what cost but the up tilt doing wonders off the ledge the invincibility running out there siski really making a good opportunity of the up tilt there huge huge stuff and I mean, let's take a look once again at the replay here and just look at the last kill once again and just how much of a masterclass this is. Siski using the neutral B again just to keep Mercuro off stage. Gonna go ahead and use one bomb. And as you can see, just stalling out the recovery on the uh, on the invincibility frames off of the ledge. I'm gonna go ahead and use the up tilt to get rid of the stock and ultimately taking game number two against the Bowser player. Yeah, exactly. Siski's so experienced in those positions knowing sometimes a big character like Bowser who can't just get past the bombs Sometimes he's got to wait there, and you will drop the axe kick in that position. So, Sissy two games up, very much recovering the momentum of his path after almost having a shock against Eru Rado earlier on. But Hollow Bastion is going to keep the stage small, and Siski is just going to capitalize, get straight in there with 41% right off the bat. Mukuro forced to recover with Whirling Fortress again, but one of the biggest get-up attacks in the game is definitely important for Bowser in this matchup. Definitely. And that's definitely what we were going to want to do a lot of the time, especially against a character like Samus as well. They're going to look for a couple to potentially just try and keep Siski at bay. Looking for the side B off for the roll-in, but no one was home there. And Siski, as you can see now, is trying to retreat back to the ledge. Going to try and give himself a little bit of space. Tries to catch the roll-in. Sorry. With the, uh, with the neutral group, but no one was home, so wasn't able to find it there. And you can see now Mokro just desperate to find a kill, desperate to find an option. Siski playing the game really well right now. Screw Ooh. attack comes out, no punish off of the back air there. Mokro just missing the mark once again here. But the grab range of Samus is just something that Bowser clearly seems to lack an answer to when he's not the most mobile in the world. Well, he's going to be taken off the top. That was certainly fast, but in terms of getting away from those long range attacks, take some real thought, but Siski is going to take a few up airs, doesn't try and overextend into a screw attack on any of these occasions, just happy to sit back under the ledge because Bowser hates getting back to the stage. They gave him not one, but two stall and falls while he's already huge and just one of the easiest hitboxes to snipe out. That charge shot actually recoiling Siski backwards, using the bomb Ooh. to restore the drift, but big back air from Mukuro, bringing us to even stocks once again. We've seen this in just about every game. Mukuro can always get down to the same kind of stocks for Siski, but since the game won SD, we haven't seen Siski in the greatest of danger. No, absolutely not. It's kind of a return to form if you're must there. Looking for the jab into there. Trying to set something up off of the jab, but wasn't able to find it there. Tries to look for the forward there. Mercury is still dancing with the devil here at 168% going to throw out down B once again and we've seen that you've seen that down B works so well before but it seems like those forward airs are really starting to build up for Mercury but every single time there's a gap in the combo there Siski's able to capitalize and is able to find the Nair Mercury now on the final stop of the set potentially here from between him and Siski Siski sitting at a nice 37 percent it's a big tall mountain to climb between uh you know the gap between both players and Mercury's going to have to pull out a miracle in order to win this because Siski right now is looking on for yeah, big tall mountain when you are yourself also quite big and tall to get past these charge shots and the forward air. Finding true every time, just barely missing with the Z and the dash attack. That's going to give Mukuro a chance to get an air dodge read, but isn't able to attack off of it. The down smash doesn't quite scrape through Siski. And now you are stuck between such a rock and a hard place, but Mukuro excellently getting in there with a back throw to break the panic mode. 
<laughs> oh, looking for a downbeat there. He gets the forward there. Once again, he's going to have to pull out an absolute miracle in order to cinch this back. Gets the screw attack. Still not going to kill. 181%. Tamas looking to potentially just end this as soon as possible there. Using the neutral, we know one was home and going to follow it up with a beautiful up here, up into the sky. Siski not wasting any time trying to get that kill and we will go ahead and take this set in a swift 3-0 and emphatic fashion there, Tail. Yep, Siski, he is back and he will earn himself the right to face either Super Semi or Orion in the next round. Here's that final situation once again. Bowser living at 181, as he can do as the heaviest character in the game. But Siski eventually, with the tippy toes, is going to take him off the top with the up air. So Siski guaranteed at least ninth and uh, restoring a lot of confidence here, the number one.